So if you like plants, or you like movies, or you like reading, this is the channel for you. <laughs> Welcome to my garden center. We're gonna do some crafts, try and make some weird things. I got these leftover succulent cuttings from work. I work at a garden center and succulents are super easy to propagate. So when I was cleaning and organizing the shelf, all this stuff fell off and I was like, whoa, free plants. Um, we're gonna make this old lampshade into a planter. We're gonna make my old shitty boots into some planters. So, with that being said, we ain't gonna garden. What should we do first? Let's do, let's do the boots first because they were, they're only gonna need a couple plants. I really, it sucks. I don't have a lot of money, so I buy cheap shoes and they end up breaking really like quick. They end up uh, getting holes and lots of funky shit happens to them because they're cheap. And sometimes it's actually good to invest in a more expensive product so it lasts longer because then you're creating less waste. But something you could always do is try to upcycle anything that you can which is why I'm gonna try and turn them into planters because I don't just wanna throw them out. I'm gonna cut holes in the toes, cut off the feet with this rusty freaking X-Acto blade. So people save up and buy nicer stuff. Not necessarily like expensive brand name stuff like Gucci. Um, but true and trusted brands like Columbia. Personally, I like to buy all my clothes from American Eagle. Uh, their jeans last forever. The shirts from American, everything I wear is from American Eagle. Uh, it lasts forever, it's comfy. We got them little boots, little booties. It reminds me, you know, how much I love nature. Not that I need any fucking reminding of that. I've come to realize that I'm different, that I'm just a different person than most people. And while that's okay, it's really hard to find your tribe, do you know? I don't really fit in because all I really see in this world is the damage humanity has done and makes me kind of unbearable to talk to and hang out with because I always need to talk about it, remind people what we can be doing. So these ferns are called Korean rock ferns. They're evergreen, which means they won't lose their leaves in the winter and they're so cool. They're so cool looking. It would be so cool if these spread around the yard. I love gardening. So my goal gardening this season is to plant as many natives as I can in my backyard for the wildlife, for the birds, for the bees. This yucca is a really cool plant that grows in the Pacific Northwest really good. I got milkweed here for the monarch butterflies. Um, I got, you can't see it, but an arbutus tree, which is a really popular coastal tree. 
yeah, it's really important to plant natives and really good pollinators for the bugs, for the local fauna. We've destroyed nature's world locally and bugs really struggle and we've destroyed it in many different ways. One of the ways being pesticides that are sprayed on crops and in people's backyards. Another way is how we've just torn down trees, forests, polluted the oceans, uh, taken away where wildlife can exist. And we've replaced it with homes and concrete and grass lawns with grass that's not native, that takes too much water, that people are obsessively mowing so it doesn't allow things to decompose and put those nutrients back into the earth which is really important, which is why my yard is a jungle. Don't judge me. Um, letting grass and leaves decompose back into the earth is super important because it puts nutrients back into the soil. Not using pesticides in your yard is something that you can do. Um, there's a lot, there's a lot. The bees need these weeds and local flowers, especially when they're coming out of dormancy and it's honestly nice. The grass may not look as perfect as like your typical American or your British lawn, but it's still comfy to walk on and it provides shelter for the bugs. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Let's keep going. I've made a mess. It's the best part of gardening, if you ask me. Making a mess, making a mess, making a mess, making a mess. Uh, 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 uh. Making a mess, making a mess. I think they look pretty awesome. We got some ferns, we got some succulents in there. Hopefully they root. They'll root, who am I kidding? They're like weeds. And weeds aren't a bad thing, people. I always say, the main difference between a flower and a weed is a good marketing team. And that is the truth. Obviously, there are invasive species of plants, but that's not really what people call weeds. Like, for example, here in Portland, we have very similar environment to Japan. So we have a lot of Japanese plants that can live here. For example, that bush I planted in the wheelbarrow is Andromeda japonica, which japonica basically is just a scientific way of saying it's from Japan. And that's fine, but if you were to plant bamboo, it also does really well here, but it's a super invasive species. It'll mess up the foundation of your house, it'll take over your yard, and it's almost impossible to get rid of. Same with blackberries. Uh, I've been dealing with a blackberry infestation here since I moved in, and it's really actually hilarious, the story behind it. Because my boss, the owner of the garden center I work at, the nursery, actually grew up in the, the home next to the place I bought. And he was the one, when he was like 10, that planted the blackberry that has invaded my yard. When I moved in, this entire back fence was just a jungle of thorns and I'm still fighting with the root. If you even leave a little bit of that root of the plant in the ground, a whole new plant will grow. So that's invasive, those are bad. They're what should be called weeds. But dandelions and other little cute things like what you see in my backyard, they're not weeds. People just don't like them because they take over the perfect grass lawns, which is just hilarious to me because it all mows like grass. You could trim it down, like the clover, I planted a ton of clover in the backyard as well. It mows just like grass, but instead it has cute little leaves and it produces flowers for the bees. It's a win-win, people. Also, this shirt is a perfect example of why I should never buy white. Who puts on a white shirt to garden? Me, I do. Me. All right, we're gonna do the lampshade. Wait, where's my shovel? I don't know how well soil's gonna stay in this because there's a massive hole in the bottom, but let's see. It stays. 
All right, I got these really funky succulents. I think these for sure I want planted. They are called Sedum Carnia? Carn yeah, Carnia. They're so pretty. I'll do a close-up shot after. Um, these guys and hmm, I'll do a chicken to hen. Whoa, chick and a hen. Then we'll throw some of these in. Bloop, 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 bloop. See if they sprout. Making a mess, making a mess, making a mess, making a mess. Gardening is fun. Gardening is fun. Wish I could be listening to music right now. And if those little scragglies don't root and come up, they'll break down and become fertilizer and nitrogen in here for these guys. So it's a win-win. Succulents are so cool and resilient and easy to propagate. And I'm lucky that I live in an environment where you can have them outside instead of just inside. Scoop that. Get your hands dirty, you know? All right, that looks pretty cool. I don't know what I wanna do with these guys. This one is a really cool succulent. He go, he's turning back to green right now, but in the winter he goes bright orange. I just love nature. I love it. I love it more than anyone I know. And I really am a champion for preserving the natural world and for people to just get outside more and fall in love with the thing that's keeping us alive. And, you know, a lot of people don't like the attitude I have because they think I come from a place of privilege. So I shouldn't really voice my opinion on things that are harder for other people to change. But yeah, I'm more privileged than a lot of people, but I still didn't come from a wealthy family growing up. And I still chose not to eat meat for the majority of my life. And if you just try and empathize more with nature and stop separating yourself from nature, because we're part of it, as much as people don't like to admit it, we're animals at the end of the day. Why do we fight so hard to work against the thing that's keeping us alive? And it's just, I don't understand why people are so against change and I don't understand why we're at this point now where we actually all have the world's information at our fingertips and people choose to be ignorant instead of just learning more and are constantly fighting against change. Why? I just, isn't it exhausting to constantly just be fighting against positive change? Why is it so hard to just take a reusable bag to the supermarket instead of using a plastic bag? Why is it so hard not to eat meat every day? It shouldn't be. It, these are easy things that we can all do. And yeah, I realize that corporations are the big problem, but this is a cyclical thing because people say, well, I can't change because at the end of the day, it's the corporations and they keep giving the corporations money. So then 
There's no incentive for the corporations to change. You keep voting in politicians that don't do anything, don't regulate things properly. So that's not a way we're gonna get change. Someone has to do something eventually. Why don't we just start as individuals? Why can't we just do more, which is actually doing less at the end of the day? Buy less shit, eat less meat. That's doing more. It's gotta be so exhausting to just constantly be fighting, to keep being a consumer, to keep being a part of the rat race that benefits really no one at the end of the day. Not the earth, not you, we're all exhausted. We all have no time to do anything. Oh. There's something so therapeutic about being outside. My backyard's a great place to be, but even better than my backyard is going for hikes and backpacking in woods disconnected from these concrete jungles we live in. It's therapeutic. It makes me so happy and feel like everything that we spend all this time worrying about doesn't really mean anything in the grand scheme of things. And it's just beautiful, just seeing the way that the natural world works together in harmony and in a way that keeps things balanced. It's possible to do that. Less intelligent creatures just live in harmony with nature. There's an ebb and flow, there's a balance. And then we come along with our big brains and we ruin it. And you gotta ask yourself every now and then, is this intelligence, or at least the way we can express our intelligence and communicate with, with each other are really a good thing at the end of the day, if we're just destroying everything around us? I don't know, people are so weird. Here's an example of like how detached we've become from everything. So I was working at the garden center the other day and this lady came in and she was like, I was digging in my yard and I stumbled upon some grubs, some little larvae or I don't know, worms. We don't know what it was. And she was just like freaking out. She was like, what do I do? What do I do? What do I need to get to kill them? And I, it's so hard for me not to be rude in those situations. Like, leave them alone. Why do you need to do something? You're digging in the dirt and you found bugs. And your first reaction is, how do I kill them? It's just crazy to me. They're just bugs existing in your yard. They're not doing anything. And there's ladies in there the other day talking shit about ladybugs and just like, I don't want anything in my yard that attracts bugs. And it's that kind of stuff that just is so unhealthy. Like we need bugs. Yeah, they can be a nuisance, but like just to be so angry that there's a bug around you that you just won't plant flowers in your yard because you don't want anything that'll attract them is insane to me. Um, just live in an apartment. Like why even have a house with a yard if you don't like nature existing in it. It's, it's exhausting and it sucks because I'm so passionate about it and I love it so much and I just want to talk about nature and make people fall in love with nature and explain to them all the crazy things that we're doing because the list is endless. But it also just depresses me because no one cares. People think I'm weird. And that's why it's hard for me to like make friends because I want to talk about shit that matters <laughs> and no one else really does. And I get it. I do. The older I get, the more I'm like, well, it must be nice. Just not genuinely not giving a shit about anything but your day-to-day -day life. Because it's not overwhelming and it's blissful. You know what they say? Ignorance is bliss. It's true. This is sorrel, French sorrel. And it is so delicious. Mm. Chef's kiss. It's like a citrusy, sour spinach. Really good crunch. Kind of just hits you right here. It's delicious, easy to grow. Grows wild in a lot of places. It's just so good. It's so good. This is my garden vlog, and I don't know how good it's going to be. 
I had a really rough time filming it. Everything was going wrong. And every time I make a YouTube video, I just get more appreciation for all of the big YouTubers that I love because even I have underestimated how much they've done. They do. Um, and I'm not funny. <laughs> I want to be able to make people laugh. And then every time there's a camera in front of me, I'm like, let me lecture you on how you can be better. And it sucks. I wish I could turn that off. And I want to do funny react videos to movies because I think that's kind of a realm where as long as I ignore other people's opinions online, I can actually have fun doing it and be a little more silly. It's stressful out here. And that's where we get into really dangerous zones because then nothing is ever gonna change. I wonder if those will grow. I hope the audio fucking worked. My antenna was hidden. So yeah. This is my garden vlog uh, spread over a week because I have a full-time job and get really tired when I'm filming. But I did my wheelbarrow planter. I upcycled two items. I have so much more gardening to do this year. Even that alone stresses me out because I don't have time. I have my, part of my veggies and herbs growing back here in those two garden boxes are gonna be tomatoes and corn and beans and all that fun stuff. <sighs> but I work full time, so it's hard to have the energy to do it all on my days off. I really do just need like to relax. And then on top of that, I wanna make content. There's a truck. My audio already sucks, dude. When I stress myself out with wanting to make content, I end up making less content. So I'm just trying just to just have fun doing it, you know, make dorky videos because I'm a dorky ass nerd and do things I love. It's gonna be random. I don't have a genre on this YouTube channel. I'm gonna make rant videos about my opinions and talk about books I love, which by the way, I'm reading a book right now called Between Two Fires and it's phenomenal. It's really good. Talk about movies, talk about the woo. You know, just random ass shit. Just Tara, just me. This is my channel. This is my mashup of crap. <laughs> just listening to the birds is so nice. Just be out here and listen to those birdies all day, you know? And then I also have those three ba bales of hay you saw me try and move. And those, I'm gonna, they came with a house. And I was gonna bring them to the dump, but now I think I'm gonna spread them out, specific parts of my yard, as like a mulch that's gonna break down and just feed the earth some good stuff. Um, I hope you guys had fun hanging out with me. And I'll definitely make more gardening videos as I go when I'm doing fun projects like this. And plants are just so cool. They're so cool. The way they propagate, the way they talk to each other, the botany of it all, which I can't even pretend to understand. Botany is a whole other level. I feel like a banana tree isn't actually a tree because the trunks are made up of leaves that haven't unfurled yet. Huh? That's what I'm talking about. This is why I'll never have a funny YouTube channel because that's the kind of shit that excites me. So if you like plants, or you like movies, or you like reading, this is the channel for you.